Welcome to your Stick Niner Empire podcast. As always, I'm one of your three wonderful hosts here. I am Mike Arango. I'm here with Lucas Ortiz and Lucas McGoughlin. As you know by now, the Niners sadly lost this game by a score of 28 to 14. There was some good, mostly bad. Let's try and start this on a good note. The Niners gave up no sacks on this day, which I find shocking. Any thoughts on the way the O-line played, considering we have so many starters out? Lucas, start with you. So the O-line played, I would say, very mixed. Uh, I thought that they blocked pass protection pretty well, particularly giving Jimmy lots of time. It seemed like there was a lot of plays where he had, uh, you know, five to seven seconds of time and it just, you know, nothing was open. He wasn't able to complete a lot of passes when he was given um, a lot of time to throw in the pocket. They did give up a sack, but I think we were bailed out with a, with a PI on that play, mm-hmm. so... It was a fumble. There was a uh, strip sack, and we recovered it, but it wound up being a first down because there was a, a defensive PI or, or a defensive hold or something like that. But offensive line played well when it came to, to protecting Jimmy. What they didn't do well is open up a lot of holes for Jeff Wilson. Uh, I thought there were some uh, opportunities to to hit some big plays with some of the play calling Kyle had, but. Just none of those none of those plays that we were popping last week and the week before seemed to go for more than three or four yards. I know we, we ran it with Debo a little bit in the second half and try to get that that going, but just no no uh, no big plays on the ground game. Um, limited Wilson to probably I think one of his worst games of the season under thirty yards. Uh, Debo had like I said had a couple carries, but nothing really substantial on the ground. It was just really disappointing to see that. Atlanta was able to run the ball on us, but we weren't able to to have that same style that we're accustomed to showing and playing physical. I don't think we played physical at all on the offensive line. I thought they were a much bit more physical team and they played how we want to play against other teams. It was almost like they were wearing the 49er jerseys and we were wearing, uh, you know, the, the Falcon jerseys, you know, it was like a, a reversal of team play. So disappointed to uh to see how we perform i know there were some some injuries out there i think mcglinchy got hurt and daniel brunskill had to had to finish the game at right tackle and it didn't really work out for us he was uh definitely looked like he was out of place at that position and just overall not a good not a good uh not a good showing there for the offensive line what do you think luke how do you how did you see it how did it look oh man it was like watching a different team all together i mean you know, the amount of injuries that we have going into that game, we know we're a better team, but man, it was almost tough to watch. And I know you were there, Lucas, so I'd have even been tougher for you guys to be there and to root on, you know, to cheer on the team. They, they try to yeah. get, uh, for instance, they try to get Kittle involved. Well, they don't have much of a, a team at this point, so it's tough to get Kittle involved. And when they, Brandon Ayuk had a great game, um, but when it comes down to it, there's a Jimmy played it well enough to win that game. I know Arango, you can uh, let him have it, but I'm telling you right now, <laughs> he, at, he finishes with 296 yards and two touchdowns and two interceptions. But one of those was three flies up at the end of the half. I, I think that uh, if anything, I'm, I'm a little bummed at um, Shanahan because why aren't they showing some urgency, some sense of urgency towards the end of that game? There's, not- they're just going in the huddle. Like, they need two scores, right? Not just one. Charlie Warner dropped a huge pass deep. Uh, they went deep to uh, McLeod, who had, I keep seeing him go deep, and every week it seems he hits his fingertips. I mean, at this point, you know, you're, you're in the NFL. You got to catch those balls. That would have completely changed the game because we couldn't sustain any drives to keep our defense off the field. Which obviously, our defense without Mosley and without most of the players on defense that we usually have. They were they were struggling out there with a team that's basically mediocre. So we need to get some guys healthy, and uh, we've got a real challenge coming up here against the Chiefs. So I'm really hoping that Bosa's back at least. And um, yeah, man, it was a really tough game to watch. You know, uh, Mariotto almost perfect in his passing, even though they he only threw for under 200 yards. Um, you know, it just shouldn't happen. We, we we're a much better team than we showed on Sunday. And, uh, and we couldn't get any lucky breaks. They couldn't get any, you know, it seemed like, and then the, the, the turnovers were pretty bad. The one that went for a touchdown against us. So um, that was a huge to play. That, that fumble, that fumble return for a touchdown just completely shifted the game. I mean, it allowed I them that, to be I able thought... to, to run the ball against us, which is what they want to do. They want to 
they wanted to shorten the game and they did. They, they I were thought able to that Wilson was places. down, man. Nobody even talked about that. He, he looked like his knee was down to me, but they didn't even look at that, think about it. The and ball just, was out. I think it was, was out. out. I think they have to review every single turnover, oh, okay. and I think they did look it up up at the booth. And you know, it wasn't an official challenge, but they do have to look at it if it is a turnover, no matter what. So and I know that yeah, you know they, they were out, able to run on us, and that was disappointing to see uh, our defense, which was so stout in every game. You could just tell that there were guys out that were out and not uh, able to play. And the backups were the backups. And, you know, sometimes they're going to get lucky and have good games. And, so, and, you know, Wilson Jr. only had 25 yards rushing. And that's just not our DNA, you know. That's and, dreadful. It's just not, speaking, we, of, speaking, of, uh, speaking of injuries, I think at one point we had two of our first-string defensive players on the field. Like, that's just – that's insane. And wow. not because of rotations, because of injuries. Yeah. So, yeah, that would make sense. Know, that would make sense. Hufunga, seven he, starters he out. Temporarily hurt. Right. Two guys Hufunga, coming in and out. Yeah, that makes guys sense. Guys were going in and, in and out of the blue tent. Hufunga was in there. I think he – he's actually in the, the concussion protocol today. He went back into the game and played most of the game, but uh, he's he's probably has a concussion, and we'll see how he's going to – I was going to get through that and be able to play for the next game. But guys like Ebby Kiam, he was getting hurt. He had some kind of uh, Achilles tendonitis from what I read today. And, you know, some of the guys on the line were getting uh, roughed up and, you know, going in and out of the lineup, but, you know, not playing 100% to their abilities because because of injuries. And, you know, it could just yeah. be something that is, is going to be something we're going to have to overcome over the, the rest of the season. Guys coming some in. Some of those of lineup, penalties were ridiculous, going. though, towards the end on our line, like our. What was his name? Right. Brendel Fly. What Brendel Fly is it? Bre- Brendel. Man. So Brendel had three. You can't have that on one drive, which is just you know yeah. those are those are yeah. killers. He had a huge. So one of them was not his fault. There was a delayed screen to Kittle. Jimmy should have thrown it early, but he couldn't because the defender had read the ball. So Kittle got open a little later in the play. Offensive linemen they don't have they don't have eyes in the back of their head. It's a timing thing with screens. They're told to go out, block for two to three seconds, and then go out and try to get guys down the, you know, down in the secondary. So it wasn't really his fault. It was kind of a delayed play, and that's why it was a illegal man downfield. Um, I did look at the play again where he was called for a holding. It was a big play to Ayuk. They negated a big, uh, I think it was like a 30 or 40 yard pass, perfectly thrown ball by Jimmy, I'd like to say. Um, and that was probably one of the best passes he had all game, but it was taken back because of a holding. Yeah. It's just like a play where Brendel was – he was ran over, and he kind of just grabbed the guy and pulled him down on top of him. So not only was he pancaked, which is embarrassing, but he had the holding penalty to go with it. And then I think there was an illegal snap on that same drive. So just killers. You know, you, you, as the offensive line, you, you, you can't get away with, with that and expect to win, especially when you need it the most, down two scores and trying to come back. And um, I think you pointed this out earlier. It was very frustrating that – Kyle didn't go to more of a sped up uh, offense and instead of just, you know, huddling up, huddling up. And then, yeah. you know, a couple times times having he went, a one yard run up the middle. I, who calls a run up yeah. the middle with eight third minutes and one. Left, it was a third left. and one. I think they wanted to like not screw around and do on fourth and one. Why didn't we have uh, our normal sneak. QB, QB sneak? You always yeah. get at least one yard Garoppolo right. up the middle. I mean, come on. That was right. a weird play call. You mean the, uh, the toss? To yeah. Kevin forcing Coleman? it to Debo, right? So he should have gone outside the the tackle who was Brunskill who came in from McGlinchey. Yeah. He actually pulled on that play and he just whiffed. Like I mean, he looked yeah. he looked so out of place. Like he, he just looked very unathletic, fell on his ass, didn't block anybody, and yeah. pretty much pretty much blew up that play. Like I mean, K- Colvin probably could have got the, the one yard if he ran it outside, but decided to cut it back in and he got stopped and it was just a but Jimmy tends to get overall. that first down, so I think that they should have just done the predictable Jimmy up the middle to keep the, the drive going, honestly. You know what? Even if we score, it's going to be about still two minutes, yeah. and we couldn't stop them on, on, on most drives. It just seemed like they were getting three or four yards or sometimes more on every single run. Every time the yeah. guy would get met in the hole, he would lean forward and fall for another two or three yards. We just weren't getting those TFLs. We weren't getting those tackle for losses. I think guys like Bosa and who else was out? Uh, Kinlaw and Armstead, like they're just so adept to getting penetration and, and stopping guys in the backfield. We yeah. just didn't have that this game. You know, there was a lot of plays where it looked like they would be stopped for a one yard gain and they would get three or four yards and it just 
you know, every time they, it was third down, it was like third and one, third and two, and they were able to pick those up. So we weren't stopping them. I don't think even if we scored that touchdown uh, late in the game, I don't think we were going to win that game. It was just too much time off the clock. So this goes to Mike Arango. So good Jimmy, bad Jimmy. We lost the game. So what's your report card on Jimmy this week? <laughs> I know I'm going to tell say. you. I'm going to tell you the good Be and the honest. bad. I, if you take away the one pick in the first half, Jimmy looked great in the first half. There were drop passes. I was proud of the guy. I thought he played really, really well the first half. I have to give him a C average only because, again, with 10 minutes remaining, it doesn't help to throw a pick. With 10 minutes remaining, I think it was eight minutes, 10 minutes left in the game, he throws a pick also. He it wasn't had, he that finished. bad of a pass. It wasn't that bad of a pass. Yeah, but you want to know something? There was another dropped interception also, so it could have easily been three picks. That's no, it wasn't a dropped interception. It. It, was a, it was a diving bat down. But I know what you're talking about. It was a, I feel it was like a, it could have been three picks, maybe even a fourth, but I, I'm going to leave it at yeah, three. They actually called a, They actually threw a flag on that pick. Yeah, talked it what over. the hell? That was a I'll, give a there was plus. No I'll give him a C plus. So How's that? It, it looked, it. I, I was very close to the field. We're on the seven yard line at the 20. It was right in front of me. It looked like he got hit right before the ball hit his hands. And that caused the, the deflection to go up in the air. It was a little high, but I think it was, it was a very similar play to the one he scored. Uh, I think it was last week or the week before where Jimmy threw him high. He caught it. The defender took a chance and didn't make the tackle and, and Debo scored mm-hmm. a, a big play. I think they were kind of throwing a, a similar play. It's just this time the defender got there a little early, was able to deflect it, and it just popped up perfectly for the guy behind him. So, you know, sometimes couldn't, it just – Couldn't catch a break, man. I mean – Right, and the, the Wilson fumble, the ball fumbled perfectly to a defender. Nobody was around him, and, you know, he was able to take it in. It's just like one of those – it's one of those games. It just – it wasn't meant to be. You know, Ayuk had a career career day with the two touchdowns, obviously. But even yeah. he had a, an opportunity to to catch a ball downfield that could have yeah, went either way, really. But you know, he didn't go up and get it like the number one pick that he is. You know, I mean, he I, dropped it's a, a little early. Had a late drop late in the game, if I'm correct. I think yeah, he had a late yeah. drop. Also. It looked it looked like he jumped a little early on that. That not to brag on him because he had a great game, obviously. Yeah, yeah, probably his best game this year, and you know, great for him. Um, I I do want to see him get more opportunities on those 50-50 balls. Right now, he's I not. I think he will now. Doesn't too. have a high percentage. <laughs> I think he's like o for o for everything on those uh those deep balls where it's it's him and another defender going up for it. Yeah. He just needs to get better at it. He needs to practice. He needs to practice those. You know, timing. Maybe using his body a little bit more to to shield the the cornerback. And that was a backup cornerback who came in for AJ Terrell, their uh, star defensive cornerback. They went right after him, and he made a play there. And then he made also made the play on Debo that deflected, deflected the ball up, deflected the ball up for the interception the very next play. So yeah, you know that one. They thing had all led sorts of, of injuries going on too. I mean, they were dealing with a lot of injuries in their yeah. their secondary, and we just yeah, couldn't no capitalize. Excuses. Yeah, gentlemen, right. we still could win that game, and we're still a better offense than they are a defense. None, none more evident by the fact that the Niners scored two touchdowns in 23 plays. Two touchdowns in 23 plays. It looked like at some point there before the half we were going to come back, but we fell flat the second half. Everything yeah. I think that we wanted to execute, they executed everything better than us, and I feel like they almost took our game plan. Uh, that, that's kind of how I feel like and used it against us almost, and it worked. You won't see me say this often, but I do feel like we were out coached that game. Um, you saw you saw the offense once you put a hurry on it. It's like th- there was more. You talk about us being flat in the game. At the end of the first half, there was a sense of urgency at the end of the first half, wasn't there? And somehow we just lost it in the second half, which makes no sense to me. You know, it's instead of having that sense of urgency at the end, we had it up front and we just lost it. And that's why I say yeah. we got out coached somehow, but. Uh, moving forward, I, I do like some of the changes that I am seeing. I saw Juice Check get involved. Juice Check looked great. I saw Kittle getting involved. Kittle had that one wonderful play. He just put his head down like a battering ram, you know? It's some great some blocks, too. I enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. I, I think moving forward, we will start using Brandon Ayuk more as we should. You know, I just – I think that, the unfortunately, we have so many skillful players. I don't want to say unfortunate, but we have these skillful players. But, you know, Kyle's a bit weary – on airing it out 
due to turnovers. I mean, Jimmy has never gone more than three games in his career without making a turnover. We aired and, it out. And, and no, that record they just weren't catching the ball, man. I mean, we went that, deep that record has several maintained times. Now. I mean, he still mm-hmm. hasn't gone three games without throwing, making a pick or a turnover. Hey, man, so in the NFL attack. and the ball hits you in the fingertips, he, we went deep a few times. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't blame Jimmy. Yeah, I, I like what I saw there from the standpoint More of the protection. Yeah, I like the fact that we were running screens very successfully. I think we ran two screens back-to-back on that first touchdown drive, which hasn't happened all year, and they were, they were positive games like we did. We, we we timed him perfectly. I think we hit him one with Kittle and then another one with Yushek. So I like that. And I like the fact that they like you said earlier, they were taking chances and throwing the ball deep. You know, it's great to get these were. quick screens and over the middle for 10 yards here and there, but you gotta test them deep and we did. And I wanna see he you wasn't he wasn't some in, of them too though. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't in uniform this game, but Danny Gray, him. I think it's time to give the, the rook a little more opportunity. I mean He's not going to catch a touchdown if he's in uh, street clothes. So I want to see him play next week. You know, Ray Ray McLeod's not going to take, take, take advantage of opportunities and, and, you know, drop, drop perfectly thrown balls by Jimmy. And, you know, maybe we put Danny Gray on the active roster and sit Ray Ray, you know, see if he can return kicks and see if he can uh, get behind the defense and, and, and catch those big, those big plays. So, um, you know, some other good news. We have some players that are potentially going to be come back next week. I think Trent Williams is, Looking like he's ready to come back from his uh his stint on the uh, the injury list. Mm-hmm. Bosa should be nice. playing next week, and I even heard grumblings of Jimmy Ward being able to play with the cast. So, any word on Jason Verrett? No, he I think to get he's still game practicing, shape, man. but I don't yeah. I don't think he's ready. I think it's going to be a couple more weeks oh, man. before uh, they'll think activate about it. Him. He wasn't able to run for yeah, so yeah. many months. He, so he's gonna, and it's going to be Charvarius. Hard. Sorry, Charvarius Ward left the game with a groin injury oh, no. he's day to day he says he, he there's a good chance that he'll be he'll be ready yeah. to go by sunday i don't think it was as bad as as boza's um they those just, are tough you know, they injuries, sound man. like it yeah they want to err on the side of precaution so the tough Ward thing about back. that sorry glinchy should be back i think that was a uh, what was the injury i think it was he a calf it, contusion he, they call they called it that but he landed straight on his knee and that's the same knee he had surgery yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. The tough thing about we those groin them, injuries is you don't necessarily know how bad it is until you go full speed again, you know, like in game mode. So it'll right. be interesting. Hopefully it'll be fine. Now, moving forward, we have our toughest uh, matchup at home, which is good. But the Chiefs are coming to town. So let's talk a little bit about that and do some predictions and uh, head out of here. So uh, what are you guys thinking? Be realistic. You know, I mean. The team we saw wouldn't fare very well against the Chiefs. Hopefully some of these guys are healthy, like you're saying, and we do a little bit better. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, Mike Arango. What do you think about the Chiefs here coming in town? The team that we saw is not going to beat the Chiefs. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to go against this only because these are the type of games Kyle Shanahan's going to stay up all night, getting all weathered, as you like to say. You know, He's aged so much in six years if you look at him, right? This is the type of game Kyle Shan's going to stay up, and he's going to scheme all night for it. I think we'll play much better against the Chiefs, strangely enough. I think that they're going to come in with a shot on their, their ass, light on their ass, fire on their ass, and I think we'll play better. I really do. I, I, I'm optimistic about it, basically because I believe in our coach. I always have. Nice. Lucas. This game is going to be the Empire Strikes Back. What I mean by that nice. is – we couldn't have had a worse game uh, trying to run the ball, um, playing defense. Like, we're just not used to giving up that many points. I think this is the most points by far that we've given up this season. And I don't think it's going to happen. Lightning's got, not going to strike twice. Patrick Mahomes, as great as he is, as great as Travis Kelsey is, as great as uh, a coach Andy Reid is, I think we're going to game plan and we're going to shut them down. I don't see them scoring more than – 15 points, maybe, maybe 17. And I think our offense is going to, is going to show up. I think they're going to be pissed off. Trent Williams, the, the silverback gorilla is going to be back on the, yes. the line playing, playing left tackle. Uh, we still got all of our weapons um, except for maybe Elijah Mitchell. I don't think he's quite yet ready to come back, but you know, the running backs are good. Like, 
it doesn't matter who we have running the ball. It's all about the offensive line. If the offensive line is opening up holes and playing to their best abilities, we can beat any team in the league, the Eagles, the Chiefs, the Bills. It doesn't matter. Cal's going to – he's going to develop a good game plan. The home crowd is going to fire up the team. And I think we're going to pull out a, a an underdog victory. I think it's going to be – maybe 30, 31 to, to 15 Chiefs. Nice. I really think that the defense is going to step up. Bosa being back is huge. Like that's, yeah. that's more than enough to, to, for us to, to overcome the Chiefs and all the weapons that they're, they're going to bring to, to yes. Santa Clara. So um, let's, uh, let's hope for the best. But Luke, what do you, what do you, what do you say? So I'm thinking that take? finally Jimmy hooks up with McLeod on a deep pass early to make them respect the pass so we can open up the run with Wilson uh, and company. And hopefully, you know, I say it's going to be really close though. I'm thinking like it's going to be tied at 24 and then going into overtime and then we're going to win it with a field goal. Uh, did you give a final prediction on the, on the score there, Mike? Before we head out, I, I, no, that you it, have to. This yeah, you is do such. It. This is such a hard game for me. Because give us the blowout, whatever. <laughs> no, I, I'm not gonna give you a blow because I, I honestly think Kyle's gonna scheme some stuff up, and I like to see more creativity on the offense. I think we can all agree on that. I don't think we've been having that. That you know, I wanted to see Kittle used more. I want to see Juice Check used more. I want to see Ayuk used more. I feel like. Kyle must be listening because he's he's following my 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 uh my wish list. So if he's gonna continue following my wish list, let's throw in a trick play or something different. Yeah. Something to completely take them off. You know, something Big that we punt, normally don't something. do. I'm gonna say I think it'll be kind of closer to your score, uh Lucas. I, I'm gonna say Niners by three or six, okay. three to six points. Uh score, maybe like a 23 20. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you think the, the Chiefs are going to score? 23 like... 17, right okay. around there. And by the way, when 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 uh, Ortiz speaks about the Empire Strikes Back, I don't think he's referring to the Star Wars shirt, but the Niner Empire, oh. hopefully. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the just stick a Niner Empire Strikes yeah. Back, right on. Just a, you know? just a, just a quick Luke. thing. So I, I was in Atlanta to watch the game live and in person. I you know, flew down from, from New York on Saturday, and I was telling these, I was telling you guys earlier, that I get off the flight, I take this train to downtown Atlanta, I come up the escalator, and the first thing I see is about 500 Niner fans lined up to go to a, a Niner invasion party, and it was just beautiful. Lovely. Man. There was people from all over the South, all over the country, actually, awesome. there to watch the Niners and enjoy it, and it was really good up until about halfway through the first quarter <laughs> when they got 14 up on us, but, you know, we didn't give up, we tied it back, and... You can hear the uh, Niners like we fans go crazy at the game. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Well, maybe, and maybe. Even that, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, even after the loss, people still had their head up. Yeah, they were disappointed with the team. But this morning at the airport flying back, everybody was still wearing the 49er gear, you know, giving each other, uh, you know, looks of, uh, you know, encouragement. And, 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 you know, it's like giving the head nods like, hey, you know, we're still a good team. We're injured. We're going to do this. We're going to make it to the Super Bowl. So. Just wanted one to share thing, that. One thing that does worry me, though, and, and this has been going on for years now since Kyle took over this team, I don't know what it is about running quarterbacks that just give us a hell of a hard time. And I, I wish yeah. we could just figure that out. I, I know it's not – fans out there say, oh, just put a spy all game. That's not what you do all game. You know what I mean? Just You don't just – So much more complicated like than that. that. Yeah. yeah. You don't just put one well, guy to eyeball a QB all, all day. That's what they used to do to Steve Young back in the days. and. That didn't work right. either. That just opens up the passing game. You can't do that all day, every play. It's not that easy, folks. Come on. Well, hopefully well that's why we if, drafted Trey Lance, right? Yeah. Like, we yeah. we want to have that dimension, and we want to give yeah. team the, the same kind of fits that that they give us. So, you know, next year we're going to have that dimension. You know, we showed a little bit in that first game, but anyways, like that guy, not Darth Vader. <laughs> let's hope that things can we can get glue things back together, you guys. And uh, uh, by the way. I've been talking with Damon Bruce about what week he's going to come on and uh, be a guest here uh, on the stick Niner empire podcast. So thanks for everyone for joining us. And uh, you want to send it off there, Orango? 
Well, uh, we look forward to definitely having Damon Bruce on the show as well. And why don't you tell some of the insiders, if anyone doesn't know exactly who he is, give, give us a little background on who we're Damon having. Damon Bruce is a long-time well. broadcaster here in the Bay Area. Um, he was on KMBR for a long time, and uh, now he's on The Game. And uh, he's he's he knows his sports. He's not, like, particularly the biggest 49er fan, but we have quite a history, so he does the show every year. And now that we're streaming live, he's going to have to comb his hair and get on the camera. So, um, yeah. tells it, tells it as it is. That's all. Yeah, you he know. sure does. Knows his sports, tells it as it is. Doesn't mince words. So, in fact, his text back to me guess. was, "Let's make sure it's after the Kansas City game, so we can really see what the Niners are made of. So we'll see what happens, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to have to play positive, yeah. positive guy that day. Maybe I, I've checked out some of his comments on the team, so I'm going to I'm going to be the positive guy that day. I used to you do know, a regular spot on his show as uh, Pat Summerall, so that's kind of like the glue that he's the one who told us to start this podcast and then made me call Lucas, and now we've got you, Mike, so uh, so keep it rolling, and uh, you guys, great to see you. Go Niners, and hopefully Go next Niners. year you'll see a winning game, Lucas. Everyone have a yeah. great night. <laughs> Go Niners. Yeah, we got to end the, end the losing streak. Go Niners. Yeah. Go Niners. Go Niners. Go Niners.